The beautiful treasures of King Tut are extremely important because it was the only pharaoh's tomb that was discovered entirely intact. In the burial chamber of the king, we discovered four wooden shrines, one inside the other. In the innermost shrine, we discovered the stone casket or the sarcophagus of the king. And inside the stone casket or the sarcophagus of the king, we discovered the wooden mummy form coffin, and inside it the golden mummy form coffin, and inside the golden one we discovered the body of the king. The shrines like these, they were prepared outside the tomb, and one was built over the other inside the burial chamber. The tomb itself consists of two main chambers and two aside rooms, the antechamber and the burial chamber. In the burial chamber, we discovered four wooden shrines, one inside the other. In the innermost shrine in the burial chamber, we discovered the sarcophagus of the king, I mean the stone casket. Inside that stone casket or sarcophagus, we found a coffin in the form of the mummy. The material was wood covered with gold leaf. Opening that wooden mummy form coffin, we found another one, but the material was gold, 112 kilograms of gold, pure gold. Opening that coffin in the form of the mummy, we found the body of the king covered with cartonnage and painted with gold leaf. Opening that part also, we found the body of the king wrapped in stripes of linen. And the head of the king was covered with two golden masks. The famous golden mask you have seen a few minutes ago in the treasure's room, and another golden mask still in, on the king's head in the tomb in Luxor. We decided to leave the body of the king in Luxor because X-raying the mummy, we found that it was mummified in a very bad way, not the royal style of the mummification. That means there, were, there may be some kind of political troubles after the king's death, and the successor king was trying to do the ceremonies of burying King Tut as quickly as possible to get the divine right to be a king for Egypt. That's why it was wrapped in a very bad way, and that was the reason to leave the body in the tomb in Luxor. We cannot move it from there. Uh, around the uh, 13th century BC, a king known as Amunophis III ascended to the throne of Egypt, and he was one of the great Egyptian kings. He actually achieved victory against the enemies in the south, in the north, in the east, in the west, everywhere and he founded a great empire in the Middle East area, or according to the historical expressions, the Near Eastern area. Uh, that king had a son. After his death, his son ascended to the throne and became King Amunophis IV. That king, the new king Amunophis IV, ruled Egypt in the capital of Egypt, I mean where Luxor now. And after six years being a king in that capital, offering to the Egyptian gods and building to the Egyptian gods, the known gods during that times were God known as Amun Ra, the great universal god during that times. After six years, he decided to change everything. In the same time, that king, Amunophis IV, decided to change his name from Amunophis IV to Ach in Aton. Ach in Aton was his name. The name of his god was Aton. So he called himself Ach in, in Aton or Akinaton. He decided also to persecute the priests of that god Amun Ra and destroy the temples of that god Amun Ra. And in the same time, he decided to build a new capital to be away from the center where that god Amun Ra was worshipped. And in the same time, he decided to choose a new court for his throne. Akhenaten was the first king or say human being to announce in clear that there is 
only one God, not too many gods as before he ascended to the throne. And we can say that he was a prophet of the monotheism in the history of the mankind. He said, what we are doing and worshiping these gods is nonsense because these gods are just statues. And it's impossible to say these statues have the right to control the universe or to create mankind because they were made by human beings. And we know who made these statues. So the God we should worship is not the sun disk itself. The God we worship is the power in the sun disk itself. And he believed and said that from the disk of the sun, we get the power and this power comes in the form of the rays and you can see the figure of the king himself we have here an offering some offering on this altar offered to the sun disk or the god atun a t u n and this is a king as you can see also beside that king akhenaton or aminophis IV decided to change the style of the egyptian art from the typical idealism in the art to the realism in the art. King Akhenaton actually had some problems, physical problems. He was not qualified physically to be as a warrior or as a knight. That's why he became a philosopher. He had a very thin shoulder, thin chin, long head, and he was suffering from some kind of diseases. That's why he decided to order the artists and the sculptors to represent him in his statue exactly as he was created. That's why the statue of King Akhenaten we have here is totally different from the typical Egyptian statue known and we saw in the museum about the idea of the realism in the art. It was very rare, it's very rare to find a statue for the king kissing one of his daughters. Can you see this? This is according to the traditions of the Egyptian art and the ancient traditions of the royal families. The king never be represented that way as if he was one of the normal people. He was a king divine and semi-god in the same time. To have the king that way kissing one of his daughters or with his family, the queen and his daughters, some of them sitting on the queen's lap or playing around them. And this steel, actually, you can see this scene. Beside that, it was very important to have the disc and the rays of the sun ends with the, sun, with the hand, the same philosophy or the same idea. This is what we call the realism in the art during that reign of King Akhenaten. We have here some of the statuettes and the head for his six daughters. He had six daughters and one illegal son. That illegal son was King Tut Ankh Amun. Yeah. Tut Ankh Amun was the illegal son of King Akhenaten because after the death of Akhenaten, they were trying to find some man to ascend to the throne. They found just daughters, legal daughters from Nefertiti. Therefore, they decided to put that illegal son on the throne from some other lady. They decided to get everything back to origin. Tut Ankh Amun was the illegal son, but he was the only one left in that family who has the legal right, and in the same time he was a man, he was a male, so he can have the right to ascend to the throne. They put him on the throne of Egypt, and in the name of the legal king, they decided to get the god Amun-Ra back to his power, and the priests of the god Amun-Ra came back to the power, and they reconstructed the temple of that god again in the name of King Tut Ankh Amun and they cancelled everything connected with the old ideas of Akhenaten, I mean the god Aton and the realism and all these kind of new ideas made by that king Akhenaten. Hatshepsut is one of a very few ladies ruled Egypt as a king, not as a queen. After ascending to the throne of Egypt, she decided to be represented on the walls of the temples or in her statues in the form of the man.
not in the form of the woman. As you can see, this is Queen Hatship suit, the man's head, and the body of the lion. The body of the lion means power.